Hey Planerholics! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Esther and today I'm going to show you an update of my bullet journal setup, continuing from the month of May since that is where I left off in my last setup video. But before I get into my bullet journal, I wanted to share with all of you and introduce, in case you haven't seen my last promo video or have not been following me on social media, my latest release in the shop. I designed a very special product for kids to get them started in the planning world. I'm sure if you are a planner girl, and especially if you are a planner mom, you will definitely enjoy and appreciate this. I'm talking about Happy Habits. Happy Habits is a fun activity that I worked on for some time, and it consists of this weekly desk pad. That is 20 weeks of activity, and you have it in blue or in pink. There are also 17 tasks or habits in the shape of stickers. The Happy Habits kit includes these 7 sticker sheets you see. All of these stickers stand for different habits and or tasks that little kids sometimes struggle with doing on their own or have trouble keeping up with in their daily schedules. It is a fun way for them to visually see when they do these habits. So basically, the parent or the guardian will establish a few weekly goals for them to do. Say you want them to pick up their toys from the room. You establish a goal for this task. For example, four times a week you want them to pick up their toys. So you'll write that down on the desk pad. I've left a blank space right here for you to do that. And each time they do the activity, they'll grab a sticker and place it on the day they do it. When they see that they've accomplished the goal, which is 4 stickers in that week, then we reward the child with something that they will like or enjoy. For example, taking them for ice cream, going to the movies, or doing some outdoor activity. Just something that will motivate them and that they will look forward to doing if they complete the weekly goal. So it's a fun activity that will help them become more responsible and accountable for their actions. As I said, there are 17 activities to choose from, 7 of them included in the kit with the desk pad. Again, available in pink or blue. And so since I was really excited about it, I wanted to share it with all of you here. I will be leaving a link to the promo video, blog post, and of course a link to the shop where you can get your very own since they are now available for purchase at plannerholics.com. Okay, now let's get into my updated setup of my bullet journal. If you want to check my last setup, I will also be linking it down below. So here is my monthly calendar for May. As you can see, it's a normal month on two pages spread. I was also using it as my expense tracker and that is why I have all of these washi strips covering up my expenses since that is private and that's something that I want to share out on the internet. As you can see, it's just a regular calendar spread where I also kept track of some important events, holidays and such. I did a bit of doodling and later on colored it in, which is something that I've gotten into the habit of doing. I will first draw out my spread and then a few days later when I have more time, I will sit down and color everything in. For the month of May and June, as you're going to see, I just used this one and only pen to write and draw everything out. And that is the Pilot Precise Grip Pen in the extra fine tip. I've now switched to using other pens, but I will talk about those a little later. The only downsides to using this Pilot Pen is that it takes a really long time to dry out on the page and it will cause a lot of smears if you're not careful. The following page is my mood tracker. I've done a separate video explaining how I use and design it, so I will be leaving the link if you want more information on that. Next, we have my monthly habit chart where I kept track of some personal goals. I then created a master to-do list with just main to-dos that I wanted to try out that month. Some I completed and some I didn't, but that was okay. We then have my gratitude page, which I created with a bunch of boxes, so when I would think of things I was grateful for and worthy of remembering, I would jot them down here. These two are personal, so I covered them up with post-its. 
Here is the challenges spread. On the left is the plan with me challenge and on the right is the rock your handwriting challenge, both from Instagram. I copied down all of the prompts, but unfortunately did not end up participating in either one of them. So even though the pages were nice to look at, they weren't very useful. We then have the first week of May. And because I didn't have a very long to-do list, I decided to create a simple week on two pages layout and used it both combining to-dos and appointments on the same pages. The next week is more of the same and this is why I love the bullet journal system so much because it is so flexible that you can change your weekly layouts based on your current needs. If you need a lot of room, then you can just create a full page for your to-dos and if not, just do something simple like this. The next week, for example, I fell off the bullet journal bandwagon and totally failed. I didn't even create a weekly spread and just wrote out a to-do list, which I didn't even complete properly. And then I left an empty, empty page here, which I later on ended up trying out some hand lettering with this elegant writer 2.0 millimeter fine tip pen. It's an awesome calligraphy pen that I was gifted by a friend. And so I used it to write out a quote from a book that I was reading that month. Then the next week is one I've tried before. It's a horizontal spread which I separate in two columns. One is for personal appointments and the other for anything relating to my stationary online shop. And then because I didn't want to do a weekly to-do list, I started doing dailies again since I had a lot going on that week. And that's pretty much it for May. Because my week ended on the left page, I always like to start my months on the left. So I just created a cover page over here. And as you can see, I still like to use a strip of washi as a bookmark to get to the page quicker each month. Here is my calendar for June. I went back to the vertical style, blocking it in two columns just because it's much easier for me to view the month this way. And I started adding more washi tape to my pages. For my finances and bill expenses, I did a different style. It's basically the same thing as the vertical calendar. In the first column, I have my bills written down and in the second column, I track my expenses of the month using some Stabilo colored pens to color code my spendings. The next page is again my mood tracker of the month. Over here, I did the gratitude page. But instead of drawing out the boxes like I did last month, I just decided to list out everything that came up in bullet points. Obviously, since it's personal, I covered it up with this journal card. The next page is another week on two pages in a vertical style which I've used before. These layouts work great again when you don't have a lot going on, but you still want to have a general view of your week and what you're doing. I have a few trackers here for chores and personal goals, some notes, and my to-dos. This next weekly layout was inspired by a bullet journalist on Instagram by the name of Pages to Plans. I'll be tagging her below so you can check out her account. It has a small view of the week with appointments, a weekly to-do list, a tracker, a space for notes, and on the right, my daily to-dos. As you can tell, I started using a lot more color to my pages. And I've also incorporated more washi tape to all of my spreads. The next week, I felt like I still needed more room for appointments or events, so I went back to my horizontal week on one page view. And on the right, I created an overview of the week with the to-do list. I did a big book order that I was waiting on, a place for notes, a short to buy list, and my tracker. Of course, more washi tape as you can see and all of my coloring is done with colored pencils. Here is more daily to-dos for this week. I tried doing it in a vertical style to be different and it didn't end up looking too bad either. Here is the next set of pages. As you can see, I'm trying out different weekly overview layouts. I'm really liking the horizontal part on the left page and I'm getting into the habit of putting washi tape across the top. I just like the way it looks. 
I also like having a big space for my to-dos and then any other notes on a separate column as well as having a tracker. Here are my dailies for this week. I also really enjoy trying out different headers for the days of the week. This one is, was especially fun to make. Then I tried doing the horizontal view without sectioning it into two blocks like I usually do. Normally, I separate my personal task from my business task, but this week I just blended everything together. However, I do admit that it's easier for me to view when I section my week. For the overview page, I switched things around the layout but still maintaining my usual sections like my trackers, to-dos, a short to-buy list, and a space for notes. Here are the dailies for that week, again trying out different headers and coloring them in. And now we are going into this month of July. I wanted to do a cover page and because I wasn't sure what to do for the double spread, I decided to cut out a magazine clipping since I fell in love with this picture and I thought it gave it a bit of a summery vibe. As you can see here, I drew out the title using my Pilot Precise Grip pen, but this is when I decided to stop using it because when I started drawing out the border, it smeared really badly and I ended up covering it up with washi tape. And so I decided to switch my pen to the Stabilo Point 88 Fine 0,4 tip. I didn't use this pen before because I thought it would bleed through. But after doing some pen testing in the back of the notebook, the Stabilo did not show signs of bleed through and just shadowed a bit. But pretty much any pen shadows in this type of paper from the Lloyd's Term 1917 notebook, so it didn't really bother me. And so I decided to give this pen a try for the following months. Again, I'm marking my month with a strip of washi tape. So I'm doing things a little different this month. My calendar remains the same, vertical in two blocks. I put some washi tape on the bottom. And over here, instead of doing a gratitude page, I decided to do a daily highlights. Basically, I just write a short anecdote or a highlight of my day. I wrote out all of the days of the month across the bottom, exactly like my calendar page on the left. For my finances, I decided to switch the page layout and created these color-coded tables for all my monthly bills. I have my mortgage, community bills, any utilities, car, medical, and food. And then a longer table to write out my expenses of the month. Again, everything is done with the Stabilo pen. And for my page titles, I use the Elegant Writer Calligraphy pen, which is a lot bolder and makes the titles really stand out. Here is a July bookstagram challenge created by at Sammy Reads Books from Instagram. I love checking out bookstagram accounts and decided to give this challenge a go since I have been reading quite a lot this year and I wanted to try something new. We then go into the first week which by now is more of the same horizontal layout. Of course adding washi tape as well as a few stickers to make it all colorful and cute. And the next week is when I started prepping it. This is this week. And as you can see, I base my colors from the washi that I choose to put across the top. So this is basically my current bullet journal setup. I love the way that it's evolving. As you can see, I started with a very minimal style. And now I'm getting braver and trying out new layouts as well as adding color and starting to stick things on the pages. It's just a lot more fun this way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please let me know if you have any questions and leave them in the comments below. Until then, I will see you in my next video and thanks so much for watching. Bye everybody!